Greetings. Now, this topic has been touched upon and to varying degrees discussed, though never at full length, in videos made by myself, by Barbara Russ, perhaps by others. And, of course, the topic is emulating female behavior. Now, as is suggestive of the title, one could well imagine that there probably are certain things that women do that men could benefit from doing themselves. And I'm not in disagreement with that proposition, at least not in its entirety. The issue, as always, is a lot more complex than should we emulate women or not. It comes down to the devil in the details, as always. What do I mean by this? Well, certain things that women do would be beneficial if men did them too. And by beneficial, I mean these things would be beneficial if men did them for themselves. That is, men for men, not men doing it for women. But we simply don't do it. There are other things, and that's where the complexity comes into the picture, that are, uh, to my mind, less beneficial, although they seem, on a superficial level and the surface, that they could be. What's an example of something that could be beneficial, something that's worthy of emulation on the part of males uh, in observing female behavior? Well, one thing is, just a very simple example, the tendency for women to fastidiously look after their health, to take care of themselves, to be concerned about sickness and health issues they might have, that is, not, uh, that is nothing to sneer at and something I think is worthy of our attention as men, something that we could focus on collectively and certainly as individuals. And of course, this goes hand in hand with the kind of ruthless self-interest that women tend to display to everyone but their blood kin, and even sometimes towards their blood kin, uh, that ruthless self-interest that I've advocated in the past, that is something that women do and I think would be beneficial. And I would argue it's even more beneficial for men in this world than it is for women. The reason for that is simple. Women consciously and unconsciously advocate ruthless self-interest for the collective uh, of... Uh, femaledom of women, uh, even though they essentially have most of the world backing them. Uh, we've been over this a million times, right? Limited, <laughs> limiting factor in reproduction, blah, 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 blah. Everyone's concerned about women hurting, blah, 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 etc. Men, generally speaking, have no one uh, having their back. And so advocating ruthless self-interest, and of course in conjunction with taking care of your health and being very attentive to health issues as they might arise, is something that could work very well for men. Because no one's watching out for us. No one's looking out for us. We're all on our own at the end of the day. We don't have men looking out for us, and we don't have women looking out for us. We certainly don't have society at large uh, looking out for us, which is simply a composite of men and women. So these are, of course, good things, I think, uh, not good in the sense as women practice them, but something that, that could be looked at and indeed adopted by men. Uh, fastidious care of one's health as well as a ruthless self-interest uh, without thinking too much about uh, the wider, broader consequences. That's not always the case. We need to practice or we ought to practice some forbearance and some caution sometimes. But in a general sense, the kind of self-interest that women uh, practice themselves is rare uh, in, as practiced by men. You don't see it very often. Men are uh, much more likely to be servile and, sa and practice uh, self-immolation, self-sacrifice, and towards a world that is essentially ungrateful. Uh, so this, these, these kinds of behaviors are, are male behaviors, but they're not beneficial towards men. But... One thing I wanted to touch on this video uh, that I that has been talked about often in the manosphere is this idea of universal male support, uh, particularly with relation to content production, but in a general sense. What do I mean by that? Well, we know that the female, the human female, enjoys the enjoys or suffers from, depending on your interpretation, the board consensus that in-group preference, which has been cited many times. 
we know that they instinctively uh, tend to want to help other women because they see themselves in other women. Uh, informally, we call this the you-go-girl mentality. And we see that, of course, this mentality, in conjunction with the sympathies that the world expresses towards women, has produced, let's be honest, some pretty good results for women. They've gotten things done because men were willing to enact the changes that women wanted them to enact, um, and women saw themselves as one unit. Now, you could think and could say, well, clearly this is a beneficial behavior. Women are engaging it. Look at all the things they've uh, had done in their names uh, simply because they saw themselves as one unit and they practice a sort of collective consciousness. Okay, I can accept that. Now, I, what I want to do, though, is look at that as a concept and, and dissect it. Now, we all know by now that the in-group preferences, it, it's just a, a switch, it's, an, it's a gut reaction. It's not something that is well codified, and it's not something that's well thought out. Uh, women practice it on a whim, almost. It's, it's just instinctual. Uh, you know, another woman's in trouble, we got to help her out because I could be that woman and so on and so forth. What's lacking in this picture is a power, or what, what, what is lacking are powers of discernment. There is no discernment here. The world is a lot more complex than a one-size, uh, shoe-size-fits-all uh, mentality. But that's exactly what the Bohr consensus applies to reality. Uh, it's why women place so much emphasis on subjective experience rather than objective experience, simply because that's what's expedient towards their ego. Uh, and But that's not, of course, a reflection of how reality actually works or what reality is. And, of course, there's no discernment there. Men are a different creature altogether, aren't we? We don't have this natural in-group preference. And I'm going to argue here that that's actually a good thing. That's not to say that supporting men in a greater sense, in a communal sense, is something to be frowned upon. Indeed, I, I advocate that uh, to varying degrees wholeheartedly. Now, many of you recall in my early days I made a video supporting uh, Brian Banks, uh, don't, asking people to donate. I donated to him. Um, this was a worthwhile cause, I think helping a guy who had been falsely uh, accused of rape try to get back on his feet. Fantastic cause, well worth investing the money and time. But that doesn't mean because we can selectively find causes to support in the name of men, if you will, that we should just flat out uniformly support everything a man does. Obviously, we're discerning, right? So we're not going to support something such as the Elliot Rogers nonsense. That's kind of obvious, though. But it's a little bit more subtle than that. I mean, look at, for example, the, we want to call it ruckus, or rather the changes that have been wrought in the past few years with regards to AVFM, a voice for men, and Paul Elam, a.k.a. the Texan politician. If men had not been as discerning as they happen to be, in a general sense, he never would have been called out on his bullshit. He simply would have been the head of AVFM, the head of A Voice for Men, a guy who just advocates for men, and because he advocates for men, we should support him. Full stop, end of the sentence. We don't need to say anything more about that. No, but instead, we saw what he was, he was doing. We saw how he was behaving towards individual MGTOW content producers, towards John the Other. Uh, we saw, we observed his actions, and we drew a conclusion and we called bullshit. We said, this guy is just a slick politician masquerading as something else. We know what he is now. And very few people in the MGTOW community support him, in the actual MGTOW community, not the fucking one that he claims to be some sort of founder or creator or advocate of at Voice for Men. I'm just citing this as an example. If we had the collective you-go-girl mentality, if we had just backed Paul Elam, regardless of what he, he's done or has or would have done, I don't know where that would have gone, possibly, but it certainly wouldn't have gone in a good direction, I think. Uh, he would have been doing things that I think are actually not beneficial towards men. And you know, basically, we've been, we would have been helping someone um, follow and pursue a self-serving agenda 
that had, in reality, very little to do with, with what they claim the compassion and helping men. This is, of course, due to the powers of discernment as practiced by uh, various members of the MGTOW community, both content producers, commenters, or subscribers. So that is a strength, not a weakness. Uh, and this is something that tends to be lacking in the female collective. Now, this can be uh, more fully extended to other things. Content production, as far as videos are concerned, we all have p opinions and views on what's good and what's not. And unlike women, we're not just necessarily going to universally support someone just because they say, I'm a man, I'm making a video, and I'm going my own way. Uh, we have to see what it's all about. If that's hard to understand, I can draw many analogies. Let's look at the term drug, right? There are many different drugs on the market. You can take you could take two extremist positions, say drugs are good and drugs are bad. Okay, drugs are good. What does that mean? But likewise, drugs are bad. What does that mean? Well, we have uh, Advil, that's a drug, aspirin, codeine. We have uh, crack uh, cocaine, that's a drug. We have lorazepam, which is a benzodiazepam medication. That's a drug. And we have equipoise, which is a veterinary uh, steroid that is not supposed to be used by humans, but people use it anyway. What do these drugs have in common with each other? Nothing except the title drug. Are they good or bad? Well, it totally depends on what the context is and what they're being used for. Uh, all four, I believe, four of the drugs I cited, they have different uses, different chemical components, and they really have completely different effects on human physiology. So it's, it's just to say we support drugs or we don't support drugs is a bad thing because we need to be more discerning. Once again, that term discernment comes up. Another example, let's look at food. Let's look at the idea of feeding poor communities. Well, in recent decades, uh, particularly in recent years, we've seen uh, an incredible acceleration and growth of obesity and health-related issues that, der that are derivative of obesity in poor communities around the world, places like Brazil, India, and even places like China, which is, of course, a growing economic power. It is already an economic power and growing still further. Now, you can say... People who don't have access to food should have access to food. It's a good thing. Food is just good. Well, there's junk food. And let's look at McDonald's. Uh, McDonald's is food, ostensibly. I would never eat it, but it's claimed it's food. Uh, look at the ingredients they put in. Look at the trans fatty acids that are in the food. Look at the sugar. Look at the excess sodium. Uh, look at the, the chemicals that essentially make for addictive food. And, you know, the picture of food becomes a little bit more blurred. You just can't say, well, it's food, right? Because this kind of food causes health problems. What I'm saying here is that uh, we need, no matter, no matter what the subject is, we need to be discerning about what we consider healthful, beneficial, or not. Now, of course, when it comes to content production, that's a matter of opinion, ultimately. Uh, we are limited to our opinions. But... If someone is producing a certain kind of content that I personally think is uh, good, I'll endorse that person. Uh, if he's not, I won't endorse that person. If I think it's actually harmful, I'll actually speak out against the person. So this is something that men do, ultimately, and I think is of benefit uh, to the male community. Rather than just throwing in our lots with every Tom, Dick, and Harry who happens to be dangling a penis and happens to be making content or claiming he's advocating for men, we, we are naturally inclined, but we also should be vigilant and discerning. Uh, and this is something that you, you find very much lacking in the quote-unquote feminist community or in the female community in general. It's just, I'm a woman, I'll back you up no matter what. And of course, here when I say I back you up no matter what, I'm not talking about those petty little things such as uh, nail polish and makeup uh, disputes. I'm talking about quote-unquote real issues. Uh, women react, reacted or have been reacting recently against the, I don't know, you want to call it fourth-way pseudo-feminist uh, bullshit that's been going on that some people decide to actually speak out against actively. Uh, I've talked about that before and the in-betweeners. 
Uh, and they do this only because of the collective urge of somehow sensing vaguely in the atmosphere that perhaps, perhaps indeed something is amiss in the world, and it's amiss and it's not boding well for us. That is not discernment. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, broadly speaking, very vaguely, that's a kind of discernment. But that's just, holy shit, these people are potentially ruining uh, our, all our goodies and, and, ben and benefits. We don't want that. So they turn away from it. That is not subtle discernment. That is not distinguishing the difference between the chemical compounds of equipoise and, and a benzodiazepam medication. I mean, this is not the same thing. That's what men do. That's what men excel at. I don't even think we could be different. But the kind of, what I'm simply saying here is the kind of wholesale, I'll back you up no matter what, uh, support that women show towards each other is the blind leading the blind, uh, and the blind furthermore intentionally, willfully, volitionally wanting to be blind, uh, focusing entirely on subjective experience, blind to the objective, and not even interested in objectively understanding the world. Now, I, I ask you this, gentlemen, surely that's not the world you want, and surely that's not the world you want to inhabit. And furthermore, that's probably not the world I would argue that you want to participate in. Do you wish to be a participant in a world where we just blindly go with the flow just because other men do this or other men do that? And in case I need to state it again, I am, you know, this channel is all about backing up men, male interests, but, you know, there are worthwhile pursuits. I stated the state of the Brian Banks uh, case. And then if something else comes up, such as the polyulum uh, debacle, you're not going to back it up because we, we, we saw what was going on there. Likewise, I personally cannot in good conscious uh, support or, or endorse every content producer who claims to be Ming Tao. Because in some cases, I actually believe the content is, is harmful. Uh, I think the content waters down people's minds and makes them stupid. But the point I'm making here is that, that we have to be very careful when we say, should we emulate female behavior? Certain aspects of it, the self-interest, the attentiveness to health, the desire to look after oneself, these are things that tend to be lacking in, in men. We tend to sacrifice a lot more. We tend to ignore problems that are affecting us. This is something that can be worked on. It can be consciously worked on and perhaps even in, in the long run corrected um, on an individual end. Um, and then in other cases, we have to be more discerning. We, do, we don't just throw our support behind everyone because that's not necessarily going to be a good thing, right? Different kinds of drugs, different kinds of food. Uh, it's just, it's it, the only thing that McDonald's has uh, in common with a high-grade steak at a, at a five-star restaurant in New York is the title, uh, or the, rather the description, this is food. Uh, a McCheeseburger is not the same quality. It's not the same thing. Uh, likewise, uh, one taking Advil is quite different than uh, snorting crack cocaine or smoking it. Totally different things. So the important thing here is that we be selective about, if we do decide to emulate certain aspects of female behavior, we be selective about it, and that we be as well uh, discerning, which I think is just something natu we naturally do. We don't automatically agree with all of you, everything we say just because we're men. That's a good thing. And let me remind you, that kind of discernment helped forge the world as we know it today. It helped create civilization. Uh, if we were simply to agree with everything that made us feel good, that everything got, got us the goodies, we, humanity on the whole wouldn't have come the long way it has. So that's all I have to say on this topic. Uh, more to come um, on unrelated topics. But uh, as always, thanks for watching, and may the gods be with you. Bye-bye.